Hi everyone, this is Algebra 2, Lesson 1-6b, and we're going to start with number 7 here. Solving a system of linear equations using elimination with multiplication and addition. So we already used elimination method, but I believe last time when we used the elimination method, our x's were able to be eliminated right off the bat, or sometimes your y's will be able to be eliminated right off the get-go. Uh, but if you notice here, our x's are different. We can't eliminate that, meaning if we tried to add these together, they would not eliminate, nor would our y's either, because our y's are different as well. So this is where that multiplication comes into effect. And we want to try to, and to eliminate either the x's or the y's. And that's something of your choosing. Again, you could start with the try to eliminate the x variable first, or you could try to eliminate the y variable first. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to try and eliminate the x's first. So on our first equation, the 5x plus 4y equals 22. And our second equation, the 6x minus 7y equals negative 9. I notice that if I multiply 6 times 5, that gives me 30x. And I notice if I multiply that 6x by negative 5, that will give me a negative 30x and that will allow me to eliminate um, the x values. And so let's see kind of what that looks like. If I multiply uh, my equation one by six, then that gives me 30x plus 24y, right? Six times four y is 24y. And then six times 22 equals 132. And then I have my second equation. And if I multiply my second equation by negative five, then what that turns into is negative five times six is negative 30 X. Negative five times negative seven is a positive 35 Y. And that will give me then 45 here at the end. Now this looks very similar to what we had, I believe in problem six or above where um, 30x plus, remember there's a plus sign here, put in red just so you can see, plus negative 30x, that gives me 0x. You don't have to put 0x if you don't want to since those eliminate. 24 plus 35 is 59y equals 177. If you were to divide that, you would get y equals three. Now, that we have the y equals three, we want to plug that back into one of the original equations. So you don't wanna plug it back into the ones that we did right here. You don't wanna do it in those ones. Again, you wanna put it back into the original ones up here. Usually I try to choose the easiest one to plug it into. And that just so happens to probably be equation one. So I'm gonna do five x plus four times three, well, doesn't look very clean, four times three, and it doesn't even look that clean the second time, <laughs> equals 22. We get five x plus 12 equals 22, you minus 12 from both sides, you get five x equals 10, divide by five, x equals two. So I should have two comma three as my point. If you were to plug uh, the two and three into the second equation, I'm just gonna do it very fast. The second equation, you'd get uh, 12 minus 21 equals negative nine. I already did the multiplication. Two times six is 12. Negative seven times three is negative 21. Um, and if you did the math on that, you would get uh, negative nine equals negative nine and it works. So that was our test. Uh, I know I went fast and I only went fast because the second half of the equation that we did is review. Um, the top part we did by multiplying by a number to be able to eliminate a variable was something new. So try the one on the right on your own. Number eight. All right, this seems a little bit crazy and it truthfully is going to get a little bit messy here. So try to follow along the best as you can and I will try to make the flow of everything look as simple as we can. 
So before, in one of our prior, I think, 1-1 one -one, um, lessons, we went over how to clear fractions. And so we'll label this equation 1 and equation 2, just so we don't get confused here. And what I want to do is I want to eliminate or clear these fractions, and I just want to get it into basically a standard form type of equation. So I want to get rid of these denominators. Mind you, this is over 1. And so what I would do for this one, if you remember, I want to get rid of those denominators. So to do that, oop, I should multiply by 3, multiply by 3, and multiply by 3, which should give me down here equation 1. That should give me 12x, try to make it clean, minus y equals 2. Now what about our second equation here? Um, I want to find the, uh, I believe the LCD, so that is going to be 10. So I need to multiply this top one by 10, this one by 10, and this by 10, which should give me 5x minus 2y equals negative 110. And if you're having trouble clearing fractions, I would highly recommend that you go back and review these. Um, that way, whenever you have a quiz or exam, you're able to not forget and hone those skills so that when you come to something like this, that's going to get a little bit hectic in a second, um, you don't fall too far behind. Now, now that we cleared fractions, again, now that we cleared fractions, uh, we want to do the same method that we did for problem seven to where I can either eliminate my X's or I can eliminate my Y's. So I'm going to do some red here. I want to try and uh, eliminate my Y value. The reason why is because I see it's a negative Y and negative two. And so it would be easy just to multiply my equation one by negative two. So multiply by negative two. And when I do that, when I do that, um, I'm gonna do it to the right here. That's gonna give me negative 24x plus 2y equals two. So this is going to move over here, and that's going to move over there. And I'm just going to rewrite this 5x minus 2y equals negative 110. If we did the math on that, you get negative 19x equals negative 114. And you get x equals 6. OK, hopefully that helped. Now what we want to do is take our x variable and plug it back into uh, one of the equations. Um, now, it is okay for this uh, type of system of equations to plug it back into one of these ones. The reason for that is just because we eliminated a, uh, a fraction, these equations are still equal to what we have above. Um, so I'm gonna just plug it into number one Again, I'm gonna plug it into number one. Uh, I'll keep it as blue. We have 12 times six, because that was my x, which I found right here, minus y equals two. You get 72 minus y equals two. Negative y equals negative 70. So you should get y equals 70. So my solution my solution should be six times or six comma 70 is my solution my point now if you were to plug these back in there um, back into one of the equations and you can test it you'll see that it actually works but for the sake of time i'm not going to do that i think we've done it enough um, always check your solutions to make sure that they're correct and try the one on the right hand side number nine Solving systems of linear equations with zero, one, or infinity many solutions. Two systems of equations are given below. We have the A and B down there. 
For each system, determine if there is no solution, a unique solution, or infinite many solutions. If applicable, give the solution. Okay, so we're doing the same thing. We're going to use a method, um, and whatever method of our choosing, it seems like, uh, to find if we have a solution or not. In other words, a point, x, comma, y. So uh, what I have here is I have two standard form equations. And what I want to do from there is I want to convert these into um, I'm going to convert these into y equals mx plus b. And I'll tell you why when we get towards the end. So let's convert these. I have equation one, equation two. I want to do equation one here. I have 3x plus 4y equals 6. You minus 3x from both sides. You're left with 4y equals negative 3x plus 6. Divide by 4. Hopefully you all remember this. y equals negative 3 fourths x plus 2 thirds. All I did was simplify the 6 fourths and I made it into a 2 thirds. So that's one. And then let's do the second one over here. 3x plus 4y equals 5. Move over the 3x. 4y equals negative 3x plus 5. And you would get a slope intercept form of y equals negative 3 fourths x plus 5 fourths. I know I went fast, but it's doing the same thing we just done on the left hand side. And we've already practiced these and have done these. Now, there's a few things I want you to notice here. Notice our slopes are the same, and our y-intercepts are different. What you should be thinking about at this point is we've seen if something has one solution, infinite, many solutions, or no solutions before. If you don't remember, one solution, I'm just going to put SUL, had different slopes. Infinite many solutions had same line. What that means is same slope and uh, y-intercept. I know my writing is not that great. That's why I'm verbalizing it to you as well. And then we have no solutions, and that is uh, same slope and then different y-intercept. If you remember, these lines would have been parallel. So if I have the same slope, different y-intercept, my answer here is no solution. No solution. Now remember, just to give you a little hint on B to help you start it, this would be, you can add zero here, right? Just to create, if you wanted to, just to create kind of the y equals mx plus B. And then just take this equation and plug it in for y and set them equal to each other. And then you'll find x and then just plug x back into one of the original equations and you'll find your y. And you'll be able to find the solution for that. And you want to see if there's one solution, infinite solutions, or no solutions at all. And uh, if you remember, this would have been the substitution method. If you wanted to look it up in your notes, we've already done this method, substitution method. Number 10, solving a word problem involving a sum and another basic relationship using a system of linear equations. All right, so this is just basically a word sentence, word paragraph, and uh, it might get a little tricky here. It says the sum of two numbers is 66 and the difference is 14. What are the numbers? Well, we've seen definitely that first sentence before when we were translating um, and creating equations. So I'm going to use for my two numbers the variables of A and B. You can choose any variables you want. I just chose those. It says the sum of two numbers. So the sum of A plus B is, right, that's an equal sign, is 66. And the difference is 14. So it's basically saying the two numbers, the difference of the two numbers is 14. So the difference equals 14. That's basically what that's saying. And the difference is, the difference between the two numbers is 14. What are the numbers? So 
before I kind of figure out what method I want to use, I'm trying to see what I'm dealing with here. I have a plus b equals 66, a minus b equals 14. So the easiest method here would be to use elimination. And I'm going to eliminate the b variable. Why am I doing that? Because it's already a positive and one is a negative. So I don't have to do any more work. So I'm just left with 2a equals 80, a equals 40. Let's plug that 40 back into one of the equations. I'm just going to do the top one. 40 plus b equals 66, minus 40 from both sides, you get b equals 26. Let's plug that both of those now into the equation number two. I get 40 minus 26 equals 14. That in fact works. So my numbers are 40 and 26. 40 and 26. I'm going to help set up number B for you, but then I want you to finish it and solve it. So it says the sum of two numbers is 32. Again, I'm going to use A and B. A plus B equals 32. One number is three times, that's a key word, right? Times as large as the other. What are the numbers? So one number is, I'm going to say A equals three times as large as the other. The other number would have been B. So there is a method that's probably best to use in this. I'm not going to tell you which one. But if you're still trying to figure it out by the time uh, you do it on your own, try to look at the previous examples of which types of methods we have, where we have elimination, substitution, uh, and so on and so forth, and come out and find what the uh, numbers are here. Number 11, writing and solving a system of two linear equations given a table of values. So we're given the table there, first customer, second com customer, number of chairs, number of tables, total cost in dollars. Okay. So I haven't fully analyzed it. I'm kind of just getting a big picture of what I'm looking at here. A party rental company has chairs and tables for rent. Okay. That's self-explanatory. There were two customers who rented both chairs and tables last week. So all I need to know now is there is a company out there that's selling tables and chairs and there's two customers that want to buy them. The table below shows the number of chairs. Okay, so I see that number of chairs, the number of tables, I see that and the total cost. All right. In dollars for two customers. Okay, perfect. Self explanatory. And we're seeing let x be the cost in dollars to rent a chair. So x is going to be a chair. And then Y is going to be tables, cost of tables. Okay. So again, I'm just reading over this because for myself too, I'm just trying to piece together what I have here. It's asking us write for A, write a system of equations that could be used to find the rental cost in dollars of each chair and table. Okay. So we want to find the total cost. So I'm saying that my X is chairs and my y is tables. So equation one, write a system of equations that can be used to find the rental cost in dollars of each chair and table. Okay, so what I need to do is set these two equations for the first customer, number one. I have two x, right, because my x is chairs, plus three y, because that's my tables, equals 31. And then, I have 6x plus 5y equals 59. So it's kind of nice because the graph technically almost set up the entire equations for us. So hopefully you're seeing where I got these from. Again, I got these from the table up here. And again, this is x and y are costs, so they're dollar amounts. That's what's missing. How much does each chair and table cost in dollars to rent? So Again, all we're going to do is use a method to find our X and Y's because it's asking us how much each chair and table cost. Hence, it's that's our cost. It literally says it right here, right, right at the top. So we have to find our X's and Y's. Um, to do that, again, we want to use a method. I'm going to use elimination method. I'm going to multiply this top equation by negative 3. 
so that I can eliminate the X's. Now, you could eliminate the Y's. You'd have to multiply the top one by probably negative 5 and the bottom one by 3, or the bottom one by negative 3 and the top one by 5 to cancel out the Y's. But I'm choosing the X's. It's just a simpler way of doing it. So my top one would be negative 6X minus 9Y equals negative 93. And my second one, I'm just going to basically copy and paste it, 6X plus 5y equals 59. And now we're doing the exact same thing we have been doing for this entire lesson. My x is cancel. And if you're confused, you are adding these, right? So negative 6x plus x is 0. You should get negative 4y here, minus 34. Divide by negative 4 on both sides, you get y equals 8.5. So a table cost so what it's asking us here, table cost $8.50. Well, what about a chair? How much does a chair cost? I'm going to take my total cost of my table and I'm going to plug it in here of 2x plus 3, 8 times 5, 0, right? $8.50 because that is my Y, my total cost to rent, eight, my, tos, my cost per table equals 31 you get 2x plus 25.5 equals 31 you minus 25 from both 25.5 from both sides 2x equals 5.5 you get x equals 275 so a chair a chair cost two dollars and 75 cents and there we have it so uh, I, I guess probably maybe the hardest part of this is setting up the systems of equations for part a and then maybe trying to figure out which method you want to use and what to multiply by i i hope that all of you are able to do um basically uh this whole part for sure just off pure skills now and mastery because we've done it so many times and again, that is why I'm going so fast on these is because my expectation is that you know how to do the skills for these, the second half. Uh, number 12, solving a word problem using a system of linear equations of the form y equals mx plus b. So this kind of gives me a hint here, right, of what my equations are going to look like. But let's, uh, let's read this paragraph here. Lisa will rent a car for the weekend. She can choose one of two plans, okay? The first plan has an initial fee of $51 and costs an additional 14 cents per mile driven. If you remember, we've actually seen this literal example before. It's probably just different numbers, but we've translated this before already. So hopefully you remember that. Uh, the second plan has an initial fee of $46 and costs an additional 19 cents per mile driven. So setting these up honestly should be pretty easy because we've translated sentences before and really, we're just translating two sentences to make two separate equations. So part A is asking us, for what amount of driving do the two plans cost the same? All right, well, uh, the first thing we need to do is let's identify first our variables. I'm going to say M is miles. And C equals total cost. And let's try and create our first equation. Basically, let's translate this. Um, so I'm having C equals total cost. The first plan here has an initial fee of $51. So my C equals a person is being charged $51 right off the bat, plus an additional 14 cents. That's why we have 0.14, that's cents per if you remember per is multiplication right miles driven so i'm gonna put times m my second one is c equals my total cost of my second plan you get hit with an initial fee of 46 dollars plus my 19 cents per mile driven now if you're still confused with how to translate these i highly recommend that you go back in your notes from the prior uh, parts of chapter one where we did translate these and review those notes so that you can master those skills and how to identify and translate these sentences or else 
basically everything else after this will kind of fall apart and there'd be no way of actually solving it. Now, for what amount of driving do the two plans cost the same? Um, all I would do was would be just to set these equal to each other because they're both equal to C. 14M equals, and you have 46 plus 0.19M. And then from there, what is the cost? You can solve for M, right? You could solve for M. And then at what cost when the two plans cost the same? Okay, so A, part A you should get at 100 miles if you were to solve it. I'm not going to eliminate the M's and stuff. You should be able to do that on your own by now. And then B, if you were to plug it in, you should get um, both planes or both planes, both plans cost $65. Again, you're solving for part A for um, your miles, and then you're going to take those miles and plug it back into the, one of the equations or both equations and uh, figure out what your cost of the plans are. So again, we've done that. That's why I'm not going to spend the time to plug variables back in. Uh, I think the hardest part again of this was translating those uh, sentences. Number 13, solving a value mixture problem using a system of linear equations. So the Foster family and the James family each used their sprinklers last summer. The water output rate of the Foster's family sprinkler was 35 liters per hour. So I know there's gonna be multiplication there. The water output rate for the Jack or for the James family sprinkler was 15 liters per hour. So there's gonna be another multiplication there. The families used their sprinklers for a combined total of 45 hours. So we see the word combined, I'm, already, I'm automatically thinking addition, resulting in a total water output of 1,075 liters. How long will each sprinkler uh, be used? Okay, so um, I'm gonna just use F and I'm gonna have that be hours, the foster family use sprinklers. I'm going to abbreviate here. You could write it all out if you want. And then I'm going to let J be hours of the James family, that the James family use their sprinklers. So I'm not going to write hours again, family use sprinklers, but that's what the quotations mean. So let's set up our first equation here. Is Let me f deal with the hours first. It's saying here that the families, both families, the Foster family, James family, use their sprinklers combined for a total of 45 hours. So that's definitely one equation. F plus J equals 45, and this is all in hours. Meaning my F will be hours, my J will be hours, and my 45 is in hours. And there's a, there's a reason why I'm bringing this up. And I'll go over that once I'm done writing this second equation. Then we have here, the, I'm at the second sentence, the water, I'm up here, output rate for the Foster's family sprinkler, sprinklers were 35 liters per hour. I've been talking too much to where my mouth is starting to dry here, but we'll try and finish this up. We only have this one, another one to go, and then we're done. So here we have the Foster family's output is 35 liters per hour. That's why I have F, right? My F is hours, 35 per hours, 35 times F. Plus, the James family is 15 liters per hour. And it's saying that the output was a total of 1,075 liters. So if you notice that then everything here is in liters. And the reason why I want to highlight this is that helps me formulate my two equations because my two equations are talking about two different things. Where the first one, everything is going to be in hours. It's talking about the hours. Whereas my second equation, everything is talking about in liters. And so there's, it's kind of almost like a trick, right? To figure out how I can make these equations because that's talking about liters. So I know that's going to be in an equation and this is going to be in the same equation because it's talking about liters. 
And then since this is liters, that's going to be in the same equation. Hence why I have the 35 liters. Oops, I just erased that. Hence why I have the 35 liters. I have the 15 liters and then the 170, uh, 1,075. And it's the same thing for hours. So if you're getting struggle, if you're struggling with finding how I'm doing this too, there's kind of little tricks and methods that will help you set these equations up. And now all we're doing is the same thing we have been doing. Do I, I got to figure out which method I want to use. I'm going to use the elimination method. I'm going to multiply equation one by negative 15. So I can get rid of my J's. So you're multiplying by negative 15. I'm going to bring this over here. I get negative 15 F minus 15 J, which is what I wanted. So I can eliminate the J's equals 675. And I could just copy and paste this over here. Basically 35 F plus 15 J equals 1075. Draw a line. The J's eliminate, I should get 20 F equals 400. My F equals 20 hours. I want you to find your J then. I want you to find the J variable in the play posit. You should have gotten J equals 25 hours. 14, our last one for this. Um, section of 1-6b here it says solving a distance rate time problem right off the bat before i even do anything i know distance equals rate times time just before i do anything i automatically already know just based off that topic that's the equation flying against the wind a jet travels 3800 miles in five hours so i have the distance and i have the rate which is usually again in time or excuse me, the rate is in, is in um, distance, forgive me, like a miles. Rate is kind of the speed. We don't know the speed and the time is in hours. Forgive me, I had that a little backwards. Flying with the wind, the same jet travels 8,480 miles in eight hours. What is the rate of the jet in still air and what is the rate of the jet in wind? Okay, so this is gonna be kind of a unique one, which is why I'm gonna go over it in detail. But why don't we use our jet as J and then our rate of the wind as W. So the rate of the jet is J and the rate of the wind is W. That'll make it easy. So let's see what we have for our equation one. My distance is the jet travels is 3,800 miles. I don't know my rate, but I know that the jet is flying I'm dealing with the J and W because I need to find the jets flying per the wind in five hours. And then number two is I have 8,480 miles for distance. And then I have J plus W. And my, where's my time? Eight times eight. So all you would have to do here then is distribute the five, distribute the eight. And let's do that. So I'm gonna bring these both over here. You get 3,800 equals five J minus five W, 8,480 equals eight J plus eight W and now it's just elimination method or whatever method you want to use. Um, I guess the easiest part would, it tr would be to try and just get the J's by itself or the W's by itself. Only reason I see is because we have five minus five W here and a positive eight W. So if I can get those W's to eliminate then I can make my life a lot easier. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna divide this whole equation one 
by five and I'm gonna divide this whole bottom one by eight. That way I can get the W's and eliminate them. So my equation one, if I divided everything by five, 300, uh, 3,800 divided by five is 760 J minus W, which is what I wanted. And then for equation two, 8,480 divided by eight should be 1,060 equals J plus W. All right, now it's a lot easier to work with here. If you uh, eliminated W's, you would get 1,820 equals 2J. Solve for J, you get 910 miles per hour for the jet. What about for the wind? What miles per hour is the wind? I want you to solve that and find your answer in the play posit. You should have gotten 760 equals 910 minus W, and that would have given you 150 miles per hour for the wind. I would say out of all the problems in 1-6, this probably is the most difficult one because having to translate this into distance times uh, distance equals rate times time, the distribution part, solving for this I think is the most difficult because you have one that's going with the wind, right? And then you have one that there's, the wind basically has no effect at all. No effect at all. So um, that's obviously gonna affect the speed and things of that nature. You can always plug 910 and 150 into the equation as well and make sure that your distance is correct. So there's various ways of checking your answers, but that is the conclusion of 1-6A as well as B, and then we'll move on to 1-7. Thank you, everyone.